Hi guys, welcome back to this ASP.NET tutorial. This is Let's Build Final Whistle and this is part two. If you haven't watched part uh, one, you might want to go and do that by clicking here. Um, just basically to find out what it is that we're going to be doing. Um, so let's just remind ourselves we are in github.com forward slash woods s forward slash final whistle and then we're in the projects tab and we've already done video one, like I say, go and click it. Video 2, which is what we're currently doing now, is setting everything up and we need to create the database tables to actually store our information. Now, what is a database? Well, a database is just basically a file on, stored on your um, server or whatever that allows you to store structured data. Um, like I said in this uh, in the previous video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be um, storing data about teams, their matches or fixtures, whatever you want to call them, and the, uh, the an, a report based on each on each match. Now there are three distinct objects that we want to store, so we'll be storing them in database in three different tables, and we need to define the structure of what those tables are going to be. So, but first, first things first, let's jump back into Visual Studio. Now, hopefully, if you got set up in the previous video, you'll be sitting looking at something like this, or maybe not even with that open. Um, this is your solution. This is what we're going to be working from. So let's just briefly run through it before we hit the database. Um, we have a content folder which contains all of our images, our style sheets. The style sheets are basically what makes the, the website look the way it does with fonts and colors and stuff like that. Um, we have controllers um, and we have a, a, a another folder called views. Now these are these these folders here, the controllers and the views, they're kind of linked together in ASP.NET MVC. Um, it might be worthwhile you checking out a tutorial on ASP.NET MVC if you haven't watched one before, but essentially, whatever's in this controller is you have a corresponding view. So you can see we've got a home controller and we have a home folder. Now if I open the home controller, you'll see a method called, called index. And if I open the home folder in views, you will see an index HTML file in there. Now basically all that is, is it's just a, this is the bit that gets chucked out onto the actual website and whatever gets done in here, um, sort of all the processing and stuff for that actual page gets done in here and then chucked into the view. So you can see it says index and then it says return view, which basically tells the web server to return this view here with any information that I chuck into it. And the home index basically corresponds to no uh, uh, no more information on the end of the URL. So for example, if we had a website, if we had www.domain.com and then hit enter, we would get the results of this home index and then the HTML file. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. So if I open this HTML file, you can see we have a home and away team in a header tag. We have a timestamp, we have an image, and then we have a, a match report. And if I go back to the website, um, the template, you can see we've got the, th this bit here, this white bit is the, the actual contents of that home index.html file. Um, there's no processing being done at it at the moment. Um, it's purely static, as you can see, by the actual file. Now, the idea behind the database would be to, whenever that page was requested, we would be shown the latest match report on that home page. So what we would do is um, get the information from the database in here, and then when we return that view, this would actually be pre-populated with information. None of this would exist, but it would actually pull out of the database based on what we had entered. But before we can do any of that, we need to actually set up the um, the database itself. So I'm going to close everything down. Um, so let's have a little think about what it is that we want to do um, with our database. Um, like I said, we've got teams, and the structure of a team table would basically be, or if you think about what a team is, it's just the name of the team. So that, that's going to be a dead simple table. Now, then we would have a match. Now, a match consists of two teams. So we would have a team name for the home. We have a team name for the away team. We would have a score for the home team. We would have or a number of goals for the home team, number of goals for the away team and the date of the actual match when it happened, the date and time. So that's a little bit more in depth. So there's going to be more information stored in that table. And the next one would be a match report. Now that object, when you think about it, it's obviously going to have content in it. It's going to have HTML or whatever and graphics and things like that. But it's also going to correspond to a, a, a specific match. So we need a way to kind of bring them all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you how to, first of all, create an actual database. And then when we've created the database, we need to create those objects in there. And the way this works is, when we create those objects in there, 
those objects will then be pulled into Visual Studio and it will know how to create a team um, based on the, the information that you enter. Now it does get a little bit complicated, to be honest it's quite hard to explain as I'm doing it, but hopefully you'll kind of pick up on what it is that I'm doing and I'll try and go slowly and I'll try not to screw up too much, but it is quite a complicated topic, but what better way to get into it than by actually building something. So, the very first thing to do is to click on Server Explorer. Now if you can't see what these tabs say, you can pull it out like that. We've got Server Explorer. And what we want to do is we want to create a new database connection and we're going to say create a new SQL server database. So if I click that, it's going to ask me for a server name. Now usually if you have SQL server and stuff installed already, which hopefully you do, but if not just try this anyway. If it doesn't work, you need to um, go and download SQL server. I'll put a link to the in the description and stuff um, to get you sorted out. But generally if you've got ASP.NET installed, it, there is an engine running underneath that can host your database. Now the way to do this is to just open brackets and hit local. Now that should work. If it doesn't, try and find out the name of your uh, current PC. You know, it might be called Family PC or Stevens PC or, or whatever it is. But brackets local, close brackets, generally works. Hopefully it will for you. It will for me. And then at the bottom, you're going to hit new database name and you can call it whatever you want. You can call it final whistle. I'm just going to call it FW because I am lazy. And I'm going to gonna go away and click OK. It's going to create my database, and you can see I've got a new data connection in here called Stephen, which is my server name, which is my local machine, um, .fw. And if I open that up, you'll see it's got some structure to it. There's a tables tag, a, a tables folder. If I open that up, there's nothing in it. Now, this is where we are going to store our tables. Now, tables are just another uh, name for our objects, our team, our match, and our match report. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a team table. Um, so if I right click on tables and add new table, it's going to open up like a designer window. Now hopefully it'll load in pretty quickly for you um, if you've got a decent laptop or PC or whatever it is that you're using. Mine's uh, a little bit slow but there we are. Now it, it looks very complicated but just bear with me. Now what it's already set up is, um, it's set up this, this new table, dbo.table, right? Now what we need to do is we need to adjust the different properties. This is basically a blank canvas for whatever object that we are creating. It. Right at the moment we're creating a team. So what we need is, we need a team name. So I'm going to click on there, I'm going to hit team name. That's going to be stored. Now what is the team name? Well it's just some text, so we need to select the data type and we will set what is called a varchar. Now that is the string representation of the team. I told you it got a little bit complicated, but these are kind of terms that you'll need to understand. Now this varchar is a string. It's a string of text or a string of image, or a string of uh, numbers. It's basically an alphanumeric text field. Um, now that 50 on the end of it is basically the maximum length that the database will will have. So if you want your team names to be longer than 50 characters, you need to choose a, a, a number that's higher than 50. The maximum you can have is 255 or you can choose a different data type which is varchar max which does some funky stuff underneath the, uh, the 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 kind of the bonnet of, of what's going on. For our purposes though, realistically a team name isn't going to be more than 50 characters. So, I mean I'll just put it to 100 just to be safe. But if I do that and then hit enter, you can see I've created a, a, new, um, a new item in this object called team name. And all I need to do really now is save it, but I just want to explain what this is here above it. We have ID. Now, the ID basically is, a, it's a unique identifier. It basically, if you imagine, if you've ever seen a spreadsheet before, you have multiple rows of, of information. Now, we sometimes want to get to a specific row. Now, if I want to get to row 8, then I would use a unique identifier of 8. The whole point of that column there, that, that that item there is is unique, so you can uniquely reference that individual uh, item. But it also has um, an extra function in that in when we're creating the next lot of tables, we actually we don't store the team name against a match. We store the unique identifier for a team name against a match. And I'll I'll go into that in a second. It'll it'll hopefully become clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this. Um, 
Now I forget how to do this. You can see this is called a primary key. Now this is, like I said, this is a unique identifier, um, and it it should automatically increase um, every time. I've forgotten. I've forgotten how you do this. It's been a while since I've done it. But what we need to do is yes, we need to click in this properties window. When we've got this highlighted, we need to say identity specification. Click on that and double click on that until it turns true and what that's going to do is it's basically going to mean every time we enter a new team it's going to increment that number automatically so we never have to worry about it but it just basically ensures that every team that we have in our database is going to have a unique number next to it so always make sure that identity specification on that ID field is set to true now that is a, a data type of integer which basically is 0 to 32,000 and whatever um, so yeah, that's our that's our unique identifier. That's all set up correctly. It was correct to to choose that data type for that unique identifier, and we've set this team name up. So basically, we we can enter team names. So we're going to save this table. Um, let's hit Control and S on the keyboard. No, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Hit Update. Well, how do we change the name of it? Oh yeah, right, <laughs> right. I told you, I told you it was a bit complicated to follow. Right, um, as you can see down here. Now this this text here is called SQL, Structured Query Language, and you can see it's it's operating a new thing here, a new function called Create Table, DBO Table, and in there you can see like the the actual code of what's going to happen based on what we've entered up here. So we've got an ID field. It can never be empty, not null. It is our primary key and it is the identity it's the it's the unique identifier and then underneath we've got team name it's of a type varchar 100 100 is the maximum length it can be allowed to be empty we could change that to not null but we'll just leave it as it is at the moment now the key thing here is to actually change the name of this table to something relevant we need to just adjust this here so if you just select that text where it says table and call this teams and then what we'll do is We'll click out of there, just click anywhere else, hit update, and it says preparing the update script. It says what we're going to do is the user actions are create database teams table, and then we click on update database. So that's it, they're done got a nice green tick there so now if we go back to this server explorer here and right click on tables and hit refresh we've actually got a teams table in there and you can see it's got an ID and a team name so if I close this down there and if I right click on our teams table we can say show table data and this looks more like a spreadsheet so I could enter all of our teams into here so I'm going to start with the best, Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester United, Newcastle United, and just to cheer Josh up, Sunderland. So now we have four teams in our database. And you'll see that every time I've entered a new one, the ID field has automatically gone up. It's it, we don't need to worry about this. I never needed to type it, and it's it's automatically taken care of it. So if I close that down, that is our database. We, we it's actually stored for us. So show table data, and you'll see we've got it back. So next stage would be to design a table to to store the information about a match. So again, if we right click, we'll just close that down. If we right click on tables, add new table. And again, we'll, we'll do this ID field first. We'll make sure that it's set to an identity. So we'll just click on that. Double click there. So it's automatically going to be incrementing all the time. Now, again, what what was the, what was constituted a match? A match was between two teams, a home team and an away team. And it also contained a score for the home, a number of goals for the home team, a number of goals for the away team, and the date and time of what the match actually or, or when the match was actually yeah was actually stored 
No, it was actually done, sorry. So what we need is we need home team, away team, we need home goals, away goals, and we need a timestamp. Let's just call it timestamp. So now we need just these properties to um, to correspond to what they actually should be stored as. So the timestamp is obviously going to be something different to just a piece of text. It's actually going to be a date time. So if we click on date time. That's basically going to allow us to saw a, a, a valid date with a time attached to it, like you know today, eighteenth of eighteenth of September at four four p.m. Whatever. Now the away goals. That's going to be a numeric value because obviously you can you have scores like one nil, um, or five four. So in order to score the away goals, we just need another one of those integers, which is a numeric value, which means we won't actually be able to add a score of A B or A C or Z Q or whatever. It has to be an integer. The same for the home uh, the the home the home goals. Now the away team. Now you would be tempted to to store this as uh, as text as a varchar. Where is it? So you would just type in the name Manchester United, whatever. But the the best way to do it is to actually reference. See if I right click this teams, show table data. To stop us from duplicating data, because y you see with Tottenham Hotspur we could have uh, we we could end up typing Tottenham or Spurs or Hotspur or THFC, whatever whatever someone decided to type. And that would make it really awkward to sort of reference that specific team. You know, and even if there was like a spelling mistake, like tooting them for instance, we wouldn't actually be able to get the information back for that specific team. So in order to guarantee that we are going to be referencing that specific team every time with a match report, we will reference its ID. So what it needs to be in our in our match table, we don't want it to be a text field, we want it to match this one, which is a numeric field. So again, this is going to be an integer. And this one as well for the home team is also going to be an integer. So we're not actually storing the names of the team in here. We're storing the unique identifiers of the team. And when we join them together, we will basically be able to find the name of the team based on uh, from the match based on that unique identifier. And it will all clear up shortly. But that's basically correct right at this moment um, the correct structure to to create a, a new match uh, fixture for two teams we'll store the goals and we'll basically make it so that uh, we, we know when the match is going to happen so again we need to change the name of this so we're going to call this matches we'll click out of that and then we will hit update we're going to hit update database We've got a green light. Let's close it all down. Right click on tables. So now we've got two tables. We've got teams, which contain our ID, unique identifier for a team, the team name, and then we've got a table called matches, which consists of a home team, an away team, the home goals, the away goals, and the timestamp. And if I open that up, obviously that's going to be uh, that's going to be empty as well. Now if I try to type in Tottenham here. It's going to shout at me because it's saying you are not entering um, a valid integer number. You're you're basically putting something in in, the, in an incorrect format. Um, so if I was to put, well, I'm not going to do it for, uh, now. But if I was to put one, it would work. This uh, this red line is just basically telling me that I've changed that column. It's not telling me it's wrong. Um, but all all of these are just integer values. Now the thing with the database is. It's. You might be thinking that this is pretty complicated, but this stuff you generally never touch by hand. You always use like the web interface, and the point of the web application is to make sure that you can't screw this up, so you can't basically enter bad information. You probably never see this. This is kind of just like the under the bonnet stuff that runs, and it automatically does all the joining and stuff and pulling the information in based on the stuff that you enter from the web application. Um, so, th the potential for screwing things up is bad if you are editing the raw data, because if I was to sort of manually go in and say, "All oh, right, well, I'll change this home team to five, this this away team to seven, then you would have a then you would have a record for a game that had never actually gotten played, and you know, it's it's kind of that's why you 
you can edit the databases but it's best to use an interface that someone has built like a web a web application backend that someone has built that will take control and basically tell you you know you can't do this um, because you're, you're going to compromise the integrity of our data if you do it but if you have access like I have right at the moment you you have the potential to, to if you do it correctly then it'll work fine but you have the potential to, the potential to screw it up by entering wrong information but luckily, this we're just defining what our um, objects are at the moment, and we're going to concentrate on building them in the uh, in the next video using a nice uh, a nice interface. So we've got our teams, we've got our matches, and now what we need to do is create the match reports object. So again, we're going to right click on tables, add new table. We're going to get this ID turned into an identity, so it automatically increments, and this one we need um we don't need the teams in here we just need the id of a match so i'm going to call this match it will be an integer value because it is corresponding to in this table it's going to correspond to this whatever this value is um and if you imagine you're probably thinking like this is kind of working out as a kind of a hierarchy which it is because a team can have many matches and a match can have a report you see so it's kind of working that way down so if i go back to this um this match report table all i need now is i've, I've got a unique identifier for this report it's corresponding to a specific match and now i need to basically put the content in so let's just call this um contents now this is going to be a large chunk of content, probably bigger than the maximum varchar length of 255. So we will use that varchar max, which will basically allow us to pretty much enter as much information as, as we would ever want to uh, enter. I forget off the top of my head what the maximum um, length is that you can put into one of these characters. Suffice to say it's pretty big and you probably wouldn't want to have that much information in a match report because no one's never going to read it. So. Um, this is the contents of our match report. It has a unique identifier, it corresponds to a specific match, and it has the actual content, which would be this stuff here. So, let's just edit the uh, the SQL and give it a table name of match reports. Then hit update, then hit update database. And we're done. So we right click there. We now have three distinct tables holding all of our information. We have teams, we have uh, matches, and we have match reports. So hopefully you can see where I'm going here. So that's our database set up. What we need to do is we need to now bring it into our application. And the way to do that is to click on the solution explorer. And we need to tell our application all about our database, I guess. So. If you close all these down, because yours is probably already closed, if it's not, just feel free to follow along. If we look at this uh, thing here, we have something called models, which basically means that's what we've done. We've created models. We've created a model for our team, we've created a model for our match, and we've created a model for our match reports. So in this folder is where we're going to basically store our layer for accessing that information. So if I right click on models, and I click on actually I might have to stop this if it's running no it's not if I click on add new item and I want to go to data click on data there and there's a thing called link to SQL classes now this basically allows you to add um, well what it's going to do is it's, allow, it's going to allow us to sort of visually see what's going on but it also allows us to link the data together within the application um, but then it also allows us to directly um, query the database, I guess, to, to get information out of it from within our code. Instead of having to write the, the if you saw on the screen, there was like SQL, which was like create table, whatever. It allows us to do that within C Sharp, which is the programming language that we're going to be using to actually build our code. So we only actually need to know one language, which is C Sharp. We don't need to worry about the, the structured query language, which can get a little bit verbose and be a bit complicated down the line. Um, but this is what this is where we are at the moment. We're going to do link to SQL classes. Now this is going to create what's called a context for our database, 
which is basically just another word for an object that's going to allow us to access the database. So what we're going to call that is we'll just call that core. You can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call mine core. Make sure that's highlighted. Core.dbml, whatever the DBML stands for. Not quite sure. It doesn't really matter. Hit add. Let it do its thing. And you'll see you've now got a, like a nice white canvas and it says the object relational designer allows you to visualize data classes in your code. Right? Now, basically what that means is it allows you to put the tables on there and link them together so you can basically see what the relationships are between your tables. So we can see how the team is going to relate to a match and how the match relates to a match report. So let's just put a load of references in there that we need to worry about later on. Um, so again, we've got this thing open. If you want to close it down and just get it open so you're familiar with it, just double click on core.dbml. That'll give us our blank canvas. And what we can actually do is we can go to the server explorer and we can just click each one, just click and drag, drag it onto there. So now we've got a match. Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? We want to bring match reports in and we want to bring our teams in. So let's just drag them to something that makes sense. So we've got a team, we've got a match, we've got a match report. So how do we make these things aware of each other and uh, so we can actually reference them in the code? Well, what we need to do is we need to right click add association. And it's going to pop up in a new box that basically says, right, what's the parent? Remember we said this, this was like a hierarchy of information where teams had matches um, and then the matches had a, a match report. So what we would do here is the parent is obviously a team. So we want to select team. The child class is a match. And in the team, we need to select the ID because that's our unique identifier. And we need to then select home team because we're basically creating a link um, in there of the uh, uh, of kind of which which team is the home team within the match. And then we hit OK. And you see there's a line being drawn across. And what we need to do now is create another one because we can also have an association between our team table and the match table for the away team. So this time we're going to click away team. So we've actually got two associations. We've got a team. When we've got a match, we must have a home team. We must have an away team, and that's how we can. That's how we basically link those together. Again, we need to create a link between the match and the match report. So we need to click Add Association. So the parent class this time is going to be the match, and the child of that is going to be the match report. So we click ID and then click on match. Click OK. So now we have a relationship. Hopefully you can see how this is going to work. We basically have a list of teams. We have a list of matches. Each match has two teams in it and these IDs must correspond to some data that exists in here for both the home team and the away team. We have a match report and that match must correspond to a match that exists in this table. So that's basically how we've, how we've set up our database and we're ready to now write some code and I hope, hope that makes sense. Now I'm just going to double check because I can't remember. I've just hit save there so if you want to close that it'll probably ask you to save. So we've got our solution, we've got our, we've got our model set up. This is our data model. If we double click that again. Laptops on the go slow. So we can always get that back and use that as a reference. Um, to see what is what it is that's going on and, and just remind ourselves of how the data relates to each other. So I'm gonna go back to the um to the GitHub account. So video two setting everything up, how to create database tables. So I've shown you how to do that. I've demonstrated the link between the match and the match report. So a match can have a match report, but a match report must correspond to a specific match. And I've showed you how to set up the links between the tables in uh, link to SQL. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this video off because it's getting pretty long.
the next video will be video three and this is where we start entering information into the into the actual database itself so we're going to create the the user interface for the admin area where we would enter um, teams where we would enter the match fixtures and we would also be able to enter the uh, the match report or in fact the match report is in video four so that'll be further down the line but in the next video we're basically going to show how how we'll create the teams and how we'll create the the actual fixtures and uh, hopefully this will start to make a little bit more sense thank you for sticking with me thank you for watching this is a tough topic to learn i appreciate you might have been a little bit lost along the way but i urge you to stick with it because it will become clearer and as you see the data going in you'll see how it kind of wires up and when we start to pull the information out you'll see why it's beneficial to use the database rather than having the information like static and having to type it in all the time so i hope you enjoyed the video please give it a th thumbs up and uh, if you want if you're not subscribed already uh, please subscribe to the channel i look forward to seeing you in the next one thank you for watching all right bye